Well, hello everyone. Uh, welcome hello. to this special Pockets Zoom event on Diplomat. We have with us the beautiful Anita Carlton Williams, who's going to be um, sharing something about this. And uh, also we're going to have some interaction on this as well. So um, I, I um, want to just start off by uh, sharing again a picture that we that we uh, showed earlier on um, on on our WhatsApp uh, platforms, but you might find that um, a, either very poor artistic impression <laughs> or something that really grabs your attention in the spirit. My I, uh, my mm -hmm. thoughts on on what it's like to be a diplomat, an ambassador for Christ on mm -hmm. the earth, and um, so uh, make what you will of that. Um, so uh, just as a thought visually there mm -hmm. and um, another thing I wanted to uh, to just put your way as well will be a, a question and something uh, perhaps to um, to think about tangibly so I don't know if you've got anything like a, a small object like a clementine or a, a lemon or a lime or um, or a uh, ball or a ball or anything like that small or ball. yes if you've got something to hand, great. If you haven't, don't panic. You can just imagine. Um, but let's just pray for a moment. So, Mary, would you open in prayer for us, please? Yeah. Mm. Father God, we do thank you that we can meet together so easily online. And we just thank you for this opportunity to hear and to learn and to be inspired by your Holy Spirit. Yes. Uh, so we do invite you to come, Holy Spirit lead our time together mm. and uh, speak uh, into our hearts today. In Amen. Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, I'm just going to share screen a, um, whoops, sorry, just a moment. It's got to get me self-organized here. One time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, are, we are being organized, honestly. <laughs> share screen. There you go. <laughs> Ooh. Yay! Yay. <laughs> okay so there is a great question there just to think about for a moment what comes to mind when we hear the word, word di diplomat or diplomacy or a companion word there mm. to think about diplomat diplomacy so just <clears throat> pause for a, give you about 20 seconds don't think too hard 30 seconds and then we'll we'll just have a little bit of a brainstorm from anyone who wants to just put in their thought there so what comes to mind when we hear the word mm. diplomat <clears throat> or diplomacy. Um, honest, honesty, tactful. Who's who's coming up? Is this Linda? This is Linda. Uh, sorry. Well, yes, I don't know how to press the buttons to put my picture on or anything. <laughs> well, we'll spotlight you for everyone, Linda. Uh, there you go. Say it again. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi. What did you say? Honesty. Honesty, um, tactfulness, um, negotiation skills. Um, good. I think that's perfect a, example. That's a good little brainstorm there. Thank you for mm -hmm. that. Someone else. <clears throat> I think number one for me is to, to be a good listener. Yes. Right, a good listener. That's mm. that's good, Nigel. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Someone else? Um, what comes to mind is a representative. So you're represent you're standing in for someone kind of. Mm. Yeah. No, that's good, come come. Uh, or is that yeah. Tai Tai speaking there? Uh, yes. it's come come. <laughs> come come. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other thoughts? A peacemaker and a ambassador. Yes. Very good. Yeah. I think it's, it is actually somebody who who um, tries to bring people together. Yes. Yes. And they might not. It might not always be in the best circumstances, but they try to actually bring people together to resolve some problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, <clears throat> that's all good stuff. Mm. I I always feel it's something to do with using the right words mm -hmm. to, um, yes. to mm. bring that harmony mm. or bring that togetherness. Yes. The um, uh, I, I was really uh, loved the story that uh, our friend Ian mm. shared this week that I posted to some of you 
Um, he had this wonderful story from some friend of his called Andy Thompson, who was at a very important sort of state gathering in the United <laughs> Arab um, Emirates, whatever Emirates, it called yeah. them, and uh, yeah. surrounded by ambassadors. And like, one of them turned him, he was all in his dog collar and stuff. He was an Anglican. He said, well, who do you represent? And he said, sir, I represent the most high God. King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the creator yes. of the whole universe who upholds this world and everything and everyone in it through his awesome power and might. And everybody yes. was kind of a little bit stunned. <laughs> turned to the person who asked him and said, and who do you represent? And the uh, the guy said, Bulgaria. So they... <laughs> and everybody, everybody burst into laughter. The whole room was silent. And, um, you know... Uh, so in Congress, mm -hmm. setting the king of kings and the Lord of Lords against <laughs> Bulgaria was so funny. Um, so, yeah, uh, so we're going to introduce our lovely friend Anita uh, Carlton Williams now. Uh, she has a, 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 a ministry called Patches of Africa, as among other things. Uh -huh. I'll let her explain some of that as she looks at this topic of diplomat um, and diplomacy. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, through the lens, I think, of of the work she does in intercession, prophetic intercession uh, in patches. So um, over to you, Anita. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. Um, Hi. Okay, Hi. so, yeah, Hi. I'm Anita. Hi. And um, I, I run a ministry called Patches of Africa. Uh, but I'll, I'll back up a little bit and <clears throat> talk about, like, you know, what it is to be an ambassador. I went and just Googled like the meaning and it says an ambassador is the highest ranking dip diplomat who represents a country in a foreign country or an international organization. Ambassadors mm -hmm. are usually appointed by their home country's government and are responsible for representing their country's interests, negotiating with foreign governments and promoting friendly relations between their home country and their host and their host country. Um, it goes on and talks about like what a diplomat is very similar so they can often be used interchangeably um, and then it says all ambassadors are diplomats but not all um, diplomats are ambassadors ambassadors hold the highest rank or the higher rank and have more responsibility than any other type of um, diplomats so i will be using the words interchangeably um but because in my organization we use the word um ambassador I'm more likely to you know say ambassadors so as as ambassadors um because I believe we are all ambassadors of Christ mm -hmm. our main job is to enforce the kingdom of heaven here on earth and the question is how do we do it how you know how does that actually happen uh a bit of background from me was um so I was born in England and and I moved to Nigeria um, 20, 2007. Wow. Um, it's an entirely, well, like a, a totally different culture from what I was used to. Um, and it was also an odd one because it was like, I, I, I wasn't accepted as fully Nigerian, maybe because I was born here and I, I had become... I had, let's say, more of an English culture than a Nigerian one. And yet, what's, and, and they had all these things going on. But basically, I just stood out like a sore thumb. And, and I hated my time there. I was like, oh, my goodness, you know, I just can't wait to leave. But that was where God had called uh, my spouse and I to at the time. So, you know, I was kind of just doing my own thing. And somewhere along the line, you know, I was praying. I'm an intercessor. I was praying and I heard the Lord say, I've given you Africa. And to be honest, my first thought was, there's no way. I don't even like, I don't like the country I'm in. Talk less of the continent. Why in the world would you give me Africa? You know, what am I supposed to do with it? And I kind of just shoved it to the back of my mind. And um, in 2018, I came back to England and um, I heard the Lord whisper to me, I've given you Africa. And I thought, uh -huh. okay, what am I to do with it? You know, I was, I was a lot calmer. Um, I'd, of course, grown up a little bit more. <laughs> um, so 
I, I, um, this time I, I, you know, I behaved like a good Christian and, and I thought to myself, okay, you know, pray about this. Don't just throw it out. And I did. And it, 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 it came in a really funny sort of way. I, you know, the Lord was like, I've given you Africa, Anita, you know, think, think about this. Let it, let it settle in your heart. And then I, um, I was like, okay, what exactly do you want me to do with this, um, continent that you've given me because I I you know I I don't know much about it even though that's part of my um heritage. And now to and I and I said to the Lord I was like I, I don't even know lots of people. I just you know I'm Billy no mates. I don't I don't have a lot of friends like that. So um I said I said okay what am I supposed to do? And then I get a call from a lady who I had met in Nigeria who is Ugandan, I believe. She's Ugandan, born in in Kenya, but was living in South Africa at the time. And so she called and she was like, you know, she just felt led, led to call me. I hadn't, we hadn't spoken to each other in about 10 years. She was like, come on, you really helped me when I was in Nigeria. You know, I, I just feel that I should um, I should pray with you. So I was like, okay. And I picked up my phone and I, you know, was chatting with her. And at the same time, I suddenly heard the Lord speaking to me about how to run this thing he called Patches of Africa. And he says, go get an ambassador from every country, get a woman from every single country to begin to pray for their country. So I'm still talking to her on the one hand. And so when, when she finished talking, she was like, so, you know, Anita, what, what, um, what do you think? And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I actually didn't hear you because... I I kind of was, you know, just talking to the Lord on something else. So I shared with her the vision and I thought, oh, surely given her, you know, the three places that she has connections with, surely she must be that divine connection that would help me to kick off patches. So I told her this story, all excited and everything. And she said, no, she said, nope, I don't want to, I don't even want to be a part of it. You know, the best I can do is pray for you. So I'm thinking, okay, fat help that was. And um, and I went back to the Lord because I was like, well, I tried, but I just, <laughs> nothing's happening. Um, and so I just began to pray into this whole, you know, I've given you Africa, prayed and prayed. And, um, and later on, this girl called again. Her name is Esther. She called again and she, she said, oh, you know, I thought about what you said and... I called up a lady that I know who's South African, who at the time I called had just finished praying and she was in tears and she was saying, where are the wailing women of Africa? You know, um, she's looking for a group to to pray with. So Uh that was how I had my very first ambassador, uh, Koketso from SA. And bit by bit, Patches, you know, it was like one ambassador would tell the next, would tell the next. Now, the way the Lord told me, he was like, you've got to take territory. And that's what ambassadors do. They take territory. Um, it's it's our kingdom mandate, you know, to, to use our authority, to take places for Christ, to enforce heaven on earth. And, you know, I think in everything, God gives a strategy. So this was the strategy he gave me, you know, he was like, okay, get a country ambassador. It's almost like network marketing, actually. It's like get a country ambassador and get have them get state ambassadors. The state ambassadors would get local governments. The local governments would get their towns, their cities, their villages, and so on and so forth. And so bit by bit, you know, patches began to grow. And, you know, I, I, I think... To, to say I was amazed would you know would be would be an understatement because really I I really don't know a lot of people, but um the Lord said now go go get a a map of Africa so I went out bought this um huge map of Africa, and just started praying over it. And I'm gonna skip a little bit just to say more recently I'd say in the last probably about six months ago the Lord said go buy a map of the UK and America and I'm you know I'm thinking man I haven't even covered Africa now you want me to look at the UK um but you know just out of obedience I've gone ahead and I've bought those two maps um but I want to really share with you the 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 strategy a little bit deeper um 
you know, like I said, there's the whole trickling down thing and it works and, and we would get together and pray at, because of the time zones, about three, four in the morning, um, we have a prayer meeting. And that's mainly in the spirit, just to build every all the ambassadors up. And then every, um, let's just say, I'll take one country like Nigeria, you know, every Tuesday, the country ambassador would call up all the ambassadors of the country, um, different states, village, what, wherever it is, and they would pray for the country. Now, we call, well, each, each place is called a patch, hence Patches of Africa. Um, you know, so it's like you have you have women who really take they take um ownership, let me use that word. They take ownership of their patch. You know, they're praying over it, they're praying for it. It doesn't matter, like I always say to them, we're not we're not led by CNN and what's going on there. You've got to I'm I'm a prophetic intercessor, so it's like, you know, I've done prophetic classes, activations and all those things, but it's like go ahead and find out what the Lord is saying about this particular patch, wherever it is, it can be in Zimbabwe, it can be an essay, find out about this patch um, from heaven and, and then pray from that vantage point, you know, because if you look at the news, it, it never sounds good. Do you, do you know? I mean, I think the news actually always picks up the worst possible thing anyway, you know? And so, we've kind of just done that over time. Now in 2000, I think about, probably about 2014, 15, the Lord started talking to me about a worldwide farming that was coming along. And so it helped also to direct what was happening in patches because yes, we were praying for the salvation of people across the, the nation, but with the word about the famine, you know, it, it helped, it, it really helped give um, direction to the prayer as well. Um, so that we weren't just praying, we were beginning to do things. You know, so I sp began to speak to the women to say, listen, I don't care if it's like a teeny patch, teeny tiny, just get yourself a patch. Most, um, unlike maybe England, and I, I don't know like where your part is, but unlike, excuse me, England, where you'd buy a house in most African countries, you buy land and build a house. Yeah. Um, and so most people just are in the habit of buying land. You buy land to farm, you buy land to build your home, whatever it is, you buy land. Um, you know, um, some people who, you know, if their if their parents have been there for years and years, or their you know, their ancestors have been there for years and years, they get land kind of for free, really. Um, so it had been, you know, on my heart based on the word to say, like, you know, start farming. So as at now, for instance, we have in, in Gambia, um, women who are producing millet and grinding it because the way the Lord spoke to me, he was like, get them to not just buy land and grow a, a crop, but to learn how to preserve that crop. You know, if it's tomatoes, tomato paste, tomato powder, tomato tin, tomatoes, canned, whatever it is, um, but jarred, find a way to preserve it and really understand your terrain. So, you know, that's kind of been going on in Kenya. They're growing um, uh, corn. Uh, let me see. In, I was in Congo, Zim, you know, they're mining, uh, mining gold. So it's kind of just been different things, depending on the area that you're in. In Nigeria, they're growing plantain. Um, and you know, just learning how to preserve these things for for you know what is what is um, coming ahead of ahead, you know, in time. So, um, so that's kind of been what one aspect of patches has been like. That's the the women praying because that was the first aspect the Lord um, kind of opened up to me, and then um, and so the second one was really to the first bit was to pray. The second bit was to help women create wealth through, you know, the farming or the mining, whatever it is. And then the third bit was to gather the youth um, to connect all across the continent. But by um, 
by by virtue of the seven mountains. So like a doctor in Nigeria would connect with a doctor in uh, Zimbabwe, would connect with a doctor in Congo and so on and so forth. You know, um, I'll quickly say now I have not got that far. Um, also, I guess is that thing of me not knowing that many people. Um, but the few young people that I, I was able to get in touch with, I kind of just um, connected with mentors, just friends of mine in um in the UK or in Europe um to say okay look these are the these kids are all in the legal profession I need you to mentor them for now you know and later form a group so that's kind of you know that's kind of what's going on as you know um you know as as far as um patches goes but what I wanted to say is like you know just like any ambassador you um uh, you need to I guess when you become an ambassador, you go through rigorous training. Uh, and one of the things you have to do is learn about your terrain, learn about the territory that you're planning to take over. I did not know that many countries um, in Africa when I when I started. I know a lot more now. In fact, I, I, well, I guess I'd I, I, you know, be fair to say I know them all. Um, but I remember the first time someone said something about Eswatini. I was thinking, where in the world is Eswatini, you know? only to find that it is in Africa. And so if you want to take territory, you do you have to know where you're taking over. I mean the Lord said he's given us the way he said, ask of me and I'll give you the nations as your inheritance. And that's what I believe every ambassador should be doing, asking for nations, because we you know, we, we say oh Abraham's blessings are ours. But Abraham's blessing was really, you know, as far as your eye can see, um, you know, this it's yours. But if we go back to Adam's blessing, it was like, subdue the earth, take everywhere, you know, and, and I really strongly believe that that's, that's, our, that's our blessing, you know, to take everywhere, to take territory, to get people saved, um, and to trust that the Lord will give a strategy, you know, on how exactly to, to do it. Um, so he gives, he gives um, blueprints. And I remember when I was saying, okay, Lord, you know this uh the word of mouth it's kind of going but not going as fast as i thought it, it should and i was like okay at the same time you know i'd like to to reach out to people somehow um you know give me a strategy and then he gave me uh what i call the pew the pew is prophetic evangelism week where um the ambassadors invite other women from whatever nations to to come on a call like this and we prophesy over them yeah i mean these people they might be unsaved they might be lukewarm what have you but they come and and so you know just hearing a prophetic word um is very encouraging to them so they come and they're encouraged and bit by bit you know they warm up to patches like okay you know um this sounds really interesting. You're praying for our country. So it means that, you know, you have uh, love in your heart for our country, even though you've never stepped into or onto our, our land, you know, it seems like you, you love this country. And, um, and one of the other things that, yeah, so that's one way of, you know, of us getting more uh, ambassadors or growing patches. And one of the other things the Lord said to me, is said, look, do you know, wherever you sow a seed, you will reap a harvest. So he asked me to just sow seed into um, just the various countries. At the time, I think I had 10 countries. It was, it was, it was a, a strange time because I was going through a lot. And I remember I was like, Lord, I have like a thousand, a thousand, I probably had like a thousand two hundred to my name. And I was like, okay, sow a seed. I send everybody like 20 pounds and, you know, that would be good. But no, of course not. Um, the Lord's like give everyone a hundred pounds, and I'm thinking, okay, that kind of doesn't leave me with <laughs> with much. I was I was left with two hundred pounds, and I was like, Lord, you know, um, I'm not trying to be funny, but like I literally don't have any money, so I'm left with two hundred pounds, and I'm thinking, okay, at least you know, I'll I'll um I'll survive on this, only for um an ambassador to call from Eswatini, saying, "Is this child and." They need school fees for the kid, hasn't been in school for X, Y, Z, you know. So I was like, how much are the school fees? 
and she named some large amount. I was like, okay, um, maybe we'll have a, a meeting and and I'll ask all the ambassadors to rally around and stuff. And I just heard the Lord say, you sort it out. So I went and converted the money only to find it was 180 pounds. So of course, there goes um, another 100 and, 180 pounds. I'm left with 20. So it's that kind of thing where, you, you know, it's, it's, um, sometimes it seems like a really rough, a rough journey. Um, you know, but I, I, you know, I want to say like, you know, being an ambassador has to be, it's got to be one of the best things I've ever done. Ambassadors come in, some come for a while, they learn about the prophetic, they get activated and they're all happy and then they leave. You know, it's like, oh yeah, I've got everything I need now. I, I can prophesy. And so why should I stay and do all this? But um, I've come to realize, you see, like if you're an ambassador, just like people were saying this evening, you're, honestly, you have to be committed. You have to be faithful. Um, you have to be ready to intercede and be, you know, um, and, and sacrifice time. I, I go to bed a lot earlier now because I have to get up at three or four, um, you know, and I've, I've come to realize that trying to, you know, trying to take the land, take the territory doesn't always come uh, easy. Some people are just really resistant. I, I, I remember working with, um, I think it's Zambia, Zambia. I mean, you, even when you, when you, cause I have what I, the way it was, is like each country has a WhatsApp group but even speaking to the people of Zambia, you find that they're seeped in witchcraft and um, I don't even know what else, the whole Ouija board, they, they, they do these cruise things where they're looking for water gods or I, I don't know, just name it, you know. And so when I got ambassadors for that, from there, I thought, oh yeah, smooth sailing, surely. But no, the whole, the the chat might, you know, I put prayers on and I say, oh, come for this meeting and stuff, but the, their own, the general chat in between my prayers and conversations are like, oh, this person's doing this. And I, I mean, it was just, it was witchcraft, literally witchcraft. And I ended up having to close, you know, that whole country down and just trust God, like, okay, look, um, when the right people come, when the right people come, then I will start it again. Um, but like I said, you know, right now um, that's going on. But I, I, I do, I strongly feel that um, God is looking at England. And, and for me, it was like, okay, Lord, you know, I, I haven't finished Africa. And he, he said to me, he said, like, you know, England is part of your heritage and this is the country you must pray for. And you can use the same strategy to, you know, to pray for this country, you know, to find people patch one patch at a time, to begin to pray um, for their country, to begin to um, see, even if, you know, even if people don't buy into the famine, because I mean, not everybody did when, when I first talked about it, even though I know that a lot of prophetic people are now talking about the famine that is uh, coming, you know, I've heard it from a lot of different quarters, but even if you don't buy into it, it, you know, it's like, okay, what are we doing about our country as ambassadors, as people sent, we're the sent ones, you know? And I believe that before we left heaven, this is my 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 belief. I, I just believe that God whispered, He whispered nations into our into into us. He whispered a dream into each of us, you know, and over time. Maybe we we either forgot what he heard, you know, but as time has gone by, you know, those things are awakening again. I believe God is waking up um, Christians, um, um, ambassadors to, to nations, you know, to take territories and to um, to bring back the glory of God over continents and over, um, you know, just over everywhere. And also to change the the how did he put it to change the the seven mountains because over and over again I keep hearing the Lord say listen these mountains will crash and there has to be the the Christian blueprint of what should be standing we have to 
have taken charge of of the the entertainment world the the technology the you know the legal the medical the educational because everything is going to pot everything you know we we have to be prepared and so i think that's all part of our our role as ambassadors you know to to pick up well to take our place first um to not feel not to to make sure that we don't disqualify ourselves um that's one thing because i you know I, I feel sometimes we do disqualify ourselves and just think oh yeah no not quite it's not for me too old too young too black too white too whatever it is um but it's not true you know because i i mean i did i did whinge for quite a while because i was like lord i mean really is is it now i mean it would have been helpful when i was much younger didn't have kids and i would definitely you know country hop across across um the continent of Africa but I'm I'm in my heart more settled now than than I ever was I certainly wouldn't have been ready when I was 20 something um and uh, yeah and I don't know I wasn't ready I just wasn't I just wasn't ready but now you know of course I'm much older and and I I'm ready to take Africa sometimes it's daunting it's 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 scary you know, sometimes I wonder, like, I, I found that of the nations that I've been able to reach out to, I have not touched one Muslim nation. So all the countries in the northern part of, of Africa, I don't have any leads. I have none whatsoever. Um, you know, um, people get tired. And, at, you know, at the moment, it's like led by women. But most, I find that most of the women are younger women. And so they've got their, you know, their young children and and stuff to deal with. So some some are like okay, able to juggle everything. Um, and I guess that's maybe the beauty of me doing it now because my kids aren't that young, and so I have a little bit more flexibility, you know. Um, so yeah, that's um, that's really what I can tell you. I'm trying to say like um. Yeah, just to say that we are we are all ambassadors and uh we have just the same way that um countries take over other countries, we have to take over the different countries and enforce um the spirit of God through prayer, mm. through um whatever it is God, you know, directs us to. We have to be able to walk in love. Love is a, such a key thing for me you know, to begin to see people through God's eyes, uh, regardless of where they're, where, they're, where they're from, what they look like, how different they are, you know, to see people through their eyes, um, through his eyes, you know, because I think I was one of those people, I think, and, and I'm hoping that I'm not still, but, you know, where it's like, okay, like if you if you came to me and you said like, oh, look, I'm Muslim, my, not like, yeah, I, I guess I'd say maybe my back would be up because I'd feel like, well, there's no way I'm going to get through to you because we're not even coming from the same place, um, you know. Um, um, yeah, you know, or I don't, let me see a better way of describing how I feel. It's, it's always been, maybe it's a little bit of intimidation. Yeah, I'd say so, because I, I've, I visited, um, it was in Morocco, and I think when, you know, when I did, I did, I felt really intimidated, because I was like, these people just don't listen <laughs> they don't listen they don't get it but that's not really the heart of god the heart of god is you know pray for them until something happens just pray push pray until something happens <clears throat> and so that's um that's basically yeah. what um you know what i'm what i'm trying to do now just pray for the northern countries of africa and you know i'm beginning to pray for the uk uh, bit by bit taking territories I mean I'm I'm in London so um, I'm not taking the whole of London right now I'm taking the Docklands because that's where I live so I'm you know doing like walks prayer walks and um, trusting God that you know bit I work in a school a local school as well so I'm praying in the morning over the kids praying over the teachers and all that and the area mm. and trusting that um, you know I will take this territory for Christ so yeah that's me Thank you Thank for you. 
what you've just shared, Anita. Um, we really appreciate um, what you're doing in that frontline kind of hands-on way. I wanted to you to just unpack for a moment one aspect I've heard you talk about before um, about how you um, look at a map and, and where oh. you look at the map. Okay, so one of the things the Lord taught me, I mean, I, I was already walking in the prophetic, but then um, I, I one day, you know, when I, after I'd gone off to everybody, like, you know, we can't, we can't rely on CNN, you know, you have to find out from God what exactly is happening in a nation. The Lord told me to go and look at the map of, that I have of Africa and picked um, a country. So I, like I said, I hadn't heard of Eswatini. So I was like, yeah, okay, Eswatini. And then he said, look at it and begin to pray into it. So I literally was like, I was looking at this map and praying and the Lord began to tell me like, oh, this place, see, look at the name. That in this particular place, there are uh, the people build shrines. And in this particular place, there's high high level prostitution. Um, in this place further down here, there's like um, child sacrifices. This is where their royalty lives. And he literally unpacks the whole map. And so um, <clears throat> just to be sure, I, I actually called up the, um, the ambassador for Eswatini and I was like, look, you know, I, I, you know, I don't mean to offend or anything, but I just want to double check that what I got in the spirit was right. And she, you know, confirmed that it was. And so over time, I've learned that, that like when, you know, when you look at a map and you, at least from, this has been my personal experience where I look at a map and begin to pray and just look and keep, you know, keep my eye on it. And like, Lord, I need you to reveal to me what's going on in this country mm. or this area uh just this patch show me and he's been so faithful to say okay look you know this is what you need to pray about because this is happening here this is about to you know there's an uprising or there's you know there's a changing of guards um in government or you know just different different things and um and that's just from you know just from looking at the map and trusting that god who who sent sent me yeah. you know would reveal things so yeah no that's that's great um i i i'm sure there's some things people will want to uh, get you to unpack a bit more anita um so let's let's um uh, just for a few moments if you've got any questions or anything you want to clarify from what she's uh, she said um, please, people, don't be shy. Unmute yourselves and and um, and ask Anita, and I'll put you on for that. No questions. Hi, Nita. Hi. Um, yeah. When you, uh, when Bob was asking um, what we thought of the word diplomat, what I got was trusted. Yeah. A diplomat is trusted by the ones who send him the diplomat and the ones who receive. Um, um, and I think what what you were saying, you you're growing in that trust. Um, of the people that you're working with. Um, I, I find it um, that, that God brings people to, to me that he wants me to, to trust. Um, have you had it where God's brought people to you, but you know that they're not the ones that you need to trust? Yep, I have. Um, and it's heart wrenching. Yeah. Um, I've had I've had ambassadors who have kind of come halfway and and like they've joined quite all right. And um it was actually a few months ago and I, I I was I was praying here by myself 
And I, you know, I, I got this uneasy feel and I, you know, I was like, there's something wrong. And so I, I, the next prayer meeting that we had, I was like, I feel there's a spirit of discord in this place. There's something, you know, that, that I can't quite put my finger on, but there's something wrong and stuff. And, um, you know, there, there's definitely a lack of trust, a lack of, I'd, I'd say a lack, lack of love <laughs> and, and stuff. And, um, and so eventually those people ended up leaving just because it just been so gossipy and like I've, I've never, and me working with women has got to be the Lord because it's not, it's not an area that I like mm -hmm. to do, you know? Um, <clears throat> and so, yeah, I, I lost some ambassadors because of that, because I just felt like if we can't trust each other and if we can't be trustworthy, there's no point mm -hmm. in you know, you can't, can two walk together unless they agree? Mm, mm. We we can't if, we, yeah. if we're not in agreement, mm. you know. Um, and then it was a funny one because at a point I had a, a group of South Africans who, I don't know what, I, I don't really know what experience they'd had, but because they know that I have a Nigerian heritage, they were like, oh, nope we can't trust you because Nigerians are just so, um, what was their word? Like boisterous and <laughs> they're noisy. And, and I was thinking, well, you know, if you knew me, you'd realize that I'm not actually boisterous. You know, I'm such a peace loving person. So I'm like, well, if you, you know, if that bothers you, cause they were like, well, that they feel like if they started, you know, I'm going to take over. And, they, and I was like, don't, don't I, I mean I really was like don't be daft because 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 <laughs> I mean I I make sure that as the country ambassador it's not my country I don't much as I'm praying for it you're there you're in the land you should rule mm. you know you should take charge of it because what I what I do is I have them have their country meetings and then I meet with all the country ambassadors so they're meeting with their state ambassadors and mm. I meet with the country ambassadors and if there's any problem, if there's anything, then they can call me, you know. But the lack of trust based on my nationality was just a little bit annoying, mm -hmm. was one. And then another time I, I invited um, a lady to join. It was even it's still South Africa because they've just given me so much stress. Um, it, she was Ethiopian. No, she well, she said she, she lived in Ethiopia and... What was the problem was that the oh, the problem was that she was white. Now I didn't maybe I was insensitive and I didn't really think it through at the time, but I just felt look, she's a believer. We're believers. But I I think what the problem was is that there's still the whole um racial issue that was going on in SA that I had not factored in. But you know, mm -hmm. so I the fault could have been mine, you know. So I was there saying oh no, you know, we now have an ambassador for Ethiopia, blah, blah, blah. She's going to come for our country ambassador meeting. And I was like, okay, we're going to pray for her and give her a word. And my SA ambassadors weren't just having it. <laughs> it was like, nope, um, sorry, we can't. And it became a them and them and us thing. And I was like, I, you know, hmm. that was how I shut down another country because I just I was like look we're either the body of Christ or we're not that's mine if we can't get past color which is the least of the problems if we can't get past color we're not going to move forward as as a body we're, we're just not it's just not going to happen you know so yes things like that um, I have I have encountered and it's it's made it a little bit hard because you do you love on people but yeah. if they're adamantly st stuck in a place mm -hmm. and they won't go forward, then mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I, I, I'm happy to for you to 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 walk away. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I patches was not my idea; it was God's idea. I know that for a fact. Yeah. So, if you choose, like, oh, okay, you you can't even abide with another uh, mm -hmm. ambassador from another country. So you're only meeting her at the country, on the country mm -hmm. level, and it's a problem for you, to the point where you can't pray for her. Then I, you know, then I, I, I can't really fellowship with you, because we're not on the same page. So, yeah, it, it's mm -hmm. a tough one sometimes. Yeah.
Thank you. Thank you. But, can, I, can I just say okay. something here? Because I think you have actually touched on a on a really important thing. Because I think the whole thing is really how far can people actually think in terms of kingdom of God? It's it, which has got nothing to do with our earthly way of thinking or our our earthly values. You know, like what you were saying about the the, the racial divide still in South Africa. You know, after all these years. It's a matter of how far have you been willing to forgive? Mm. You know, and it doesn't matter on which side you are, if you're on the white side or if you're on the black side, it makes no difference. How far are you actually willing to forgive and how far are you actually willing to allow God work in your heart so that actually his purposes for his kingdom actually can be established in your heart? Mm. Because it's only then that we actually will be able to accomplish what God wants us to accomplish. Mm. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. I mean, it, it, to be honest, it was even it was actually on both sides. I mean, my ambassadors messed up, and it was embarrassing. Yeah. But when I spoke to the lady later, you know, mm -hmm. she she did say the whole them and us thing, and I, I was like, okay, look, you clearly both have issues on the race mm. front. Yeah. I cannot at this point in time, you know, invite you to be the country head of Ethiopia if you still have issues black white issues i i just i think they're just too fundamental and i you know i it irritates me because i still feel like race the race issues are so they're like this you know when when it comes to kingdom yeah why, why are we still fighting over race yeah absolutely but you see the problem to me is actually the lack of understanding mm -hmm. because everything that goes wrong it's always about race yeah you know it's it's never a matter about social standing or character of a person it's mm. always seen in the in the in the framework of race mm. if somebody yeah. has got a different color of skin it's always race it has got nothing to do with character and that is one of the biggest issues and actually i almost want to say this is a serious prayer point mm. because people cannot think beyond this this stupid limitation of race yeah because the thing is this, your skin color has got nothing to do with your character. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. But absolutely. Let me come in with um, a, a, a general thought, because I, I took the words of um, 2 Corinthians 5 about um, that God has given us a min the, the ministry of reconciliation. Exactly. Yeah. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, yep. counting people's sins against mm -hmm. them. And he's mm -hmm. to us the message of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. So in a in a, 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 a very incredible broad way, this is um, uh, the kingdom governmental ministry yeah. that we have. If you're going to talk about um, government mm -hmm. ministries, our kingdom ministry that we all belong to on this call is yeah. the ministry of reconciliation. <laughs> and so <laughs> as a fundamental of that, um, one, one has to take on board and breathe um, that mm -hmm. message, message of reconciliation. Um, as, and then it goes on, verse 20, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So yep. you know, love God, you love your neighbor. They're yeah. so intertwined that yeah. really to to step forward in the ambassadorial role that God has called us mm -hmm. to, we must mm -hmm. embrace that message of reconciliation. Yeah. If God is not counting yeah. uh, our sins against us, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Even if we have some foundational cause for complaint mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. the systems we have been um, brought up in or born into, nevertheless, God calls us to the ministry of reconciliation. Yep. Yes. So yeah. that's a, a, a thought there to add in. Because the other thing too that, I'm, that I'm reminded of is that scripture, and I think it was actually Peter who was saying that, how do you say, how dare you say that you love God, but yet that you don't? love your brother that you actually can see mm -hmm. yeah yeah so just, you know I'm and the gonna... thing is that once we start getting into this it's sort of like how on earth can we then actually maintain that we love god if we don't love our brother yeah yeah thank you Elena. i'm gonna just open mm -hmm. you up again yeah sure i'm um uh, thinking of the good samaritan um yeah. there in the all yeah, the yeah. um malls around him yeah thank you for that mm -hmm. Any other um, comments on that? I Could I uh, ask two questions, please? See who's, who is um, well. Who's Pat? I need those Pat. 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 Yeah. 
I uh, live in the northeast of England. I have two okay. questions. The first one is, are you in relationship with another prophetic ministry in, or do you make yourself accountable to another uh, spiritual mother, um, father, or, you know, what, what is your journey into that? Um, my journey now? has been, okay, um, I'd say Morning Star. Oh, yeah. Uh, with Julia's Church. Um, we are, my husband and I are um, members not members isn't the word I just it mm -hmm. fails me not partners that's the word we're partners yeah, yeah. with Rick Joyner <clears throat> um and then I do have quite a few other prophetic um people that I'm accountable to um in terms of you know giving any words that are like if I feel like the word's a little out there yeah. um, then I run it by people just to make sure that it's not like I had too much pizza and I just you know yeah. I'm saying something that's rubbish <laughs> um yeah. but yeah I, I believe in accountability yeah and yeah. um yeah so the other one is about England how do you see that unfolding on the on the on the practical level on the practical level I I, I feel that the model of patches of Africa could quite easily work you know just having people from different um, different parts of the country take ownership of mm -hmm. their country and, you know, get a gathering of, of men, women, you know, however, however people want to run it and, you know, begin to pray. Like I said, for me, it was like I have different countries, different countries meet at different times during the week. We don't yeah. do weekends at all. Um, so... So let's just say if I if I had it exactly the same way Patches was and I said, okay, there's a London, there's a London um WhatsApp group, then all all the London ambassadors would um come together and pray. And then mm -hmm. as time goes on, we'd separate it to North London, East London, South London, like that, mm -hmm. you know, um, as it grows. So it's it's you know, it's as it grows that you're able to kind of like spread out a little bit more and cover more ground. Uh, you know, and, yeah. yeah. Do you know of any prayer networks in this country? Are you aware of the prayer networks um, relationship in this country? Not, not really, not really. Uh, when yeah. you say prayer networks, who are you thinking? And no, I'm just, I'm just like wondering because I, I know of pocket, you know, like pockets of people who who gather to pray largely women, okay. I think. Yeah, no. Well, it's how they join up. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just to come in yeah, with no, what no. that is yeah. saying. Uh, I, I do think actually that the Lord seems to be, um, uh, bringing together networks of networks. Mm. So yeah, yeah. The um, that we're, we're aware, for example, in the northeast, um, Anita, uh, others on this call, that uh, okay. that the, the, the we, we, there's about th uh, the, the three different prayer initiatives regionally have, have mm, yeah. come forward over the last um uh, month uh, you know so that yeah, uh, we've months, got maybe. we've got world prayer center rural ministries we've got national day of prayer jonathan Oyedi, um we've got okay. a borderland revival conference all all um initiating prayer for the region and um okay. there's a sort of an interplay between these different mm. models the only way I can understand that is that there's the Lord is bringing together networks and networks to do this job rather than thinking, oh, we've got to just have one network yeah, yeah. in one go. Um, one, one, uh, just one question, Anita. Yeah. Um, you mentioned um, the the seven, the seven hills, Mountain. the seven. Yeah. Mountains, yes. mm -hmm. yeah, and and you you said you know that um, when we hit the seed, we're actually um, looking for a change in those mountains. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're actually sort of saying, as Christians, we're saying, you know, we take ownership of that particular mountain. Mm -hmm. My question is. What do we do with it once we've taken it over? Um, honestly, I'm not 100% sure. Um, 
I'm not really sure, but I just feel like we need to be ready. I'll give mm. you a good example. I I I was um I was somewhere and um Dr. Sharon Stone came to mm. minister there, which is a, a a friend's um a friend of mine's um church. Mm. And so she came and I was in the office with her and we sort of got chatting. Anyway, later on she had a word for me and she was like, Oh, you know, you know, the Lord has put you in this educational um space. And once again, it was like, you know, she, she was like you, you're ministerial royalty across Africa and, you know, education and education. Mm-hmm. Tommy Arayomi as well had come and he talked about, you know, he had come to our church when I was in Nigeria to say, hey, the Lord has given you this thing about education as well. Now, I homeschooled my my three kids. And when I did, um, when I started out, I was like, Lord, you know me, I'm I'm like, Dizzy Gillespie herself because I'm I cannot follow a curriculum you know it's like do I go with the English one do I go with the American one what do you want me to do you know and just show me give me something that I like you know that kind of warms my heart and I can work with and he literally gave me a brand new curriculum now the problem with me is I'm not the most um administrative person that's not one of my giftings <laughs> and so I was really taking it day by day mm. but the curriculum was very different it was you know it was one making sure that my kids were so grounded in the word um but the and then the actual day-to-day curriculum was based on creation yeah um that's not in any curriculum that I've seen here but it was ba- it was based on on you know day one God created the heavens and the mm. earth and it was like I looked at all the heavenlies I you know solar system we looked we we did it in parallel with okay heavens and earth look at look at the you know divine the really you know just all heaven mm-hmm. then look at the earth look at the continents and then he made the sun and so we did you know time and sun and just everything you know, now when I popped them into school, because I did this when really because we moved to Nigeria and I didn't, I you know, I, I just wasn't hundred percent on on um the the way the kids were being taught. But at a point, you know, I popped them into school just to see, just to make sure, I, you know, I wasn't damaging my kids in any way, um, educationally, and the teachers were like, oh my goodness, you know, they're they're so way at in you know ahead of the <laughs> whole class. Mm. And in fact, I got a, a rude message saying, oh, look, we know you're a pastor. So why don't you just keep to pastoring and leave the teaching to us? Because the kids mm. are that, you know, they, they know too much. And this is not we, you know, they would tell my kids when they stand up to mm. answer questions. It's like we didn't ask you for all that information, mm. you know, <laughs> but it's for me, that's like, you know, getting a divine <laughs> curriculum for education. Mm. Yeah, I just like Thank I said, you. I yet to write it down, but it, at least it's there. It's well, it's not there. It's, it's kind of still in my head, but yeah. I will write it down and be ready so that when the time comes, I can bring it up because I know those the seven mountains are going to crash. Yeah. Yeah. They are. Thank, thank you for that question, Colin. And uh, it's close yeah. to our heart that, and it was a really yeah. excellent um, thing to bring out there for Anita to share. And we so appreciate your time. The time is. Oh, I did mention earlier on that um, if you had something to hold in your hand, I don't know if you still have, but uh, the reason I said that was um, uh, the idea of of recognising, you know, there's a little globe there, to recognise <laughs> how the earth appears from God's point of view. Um, yeah. In fact, um, you have, don't you, those, those wonderful words that the Lord um, has, um, you know, you have Psalm 24, Verse one, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, Mm -hmm. the world and all who live in it. You have Isaiah 40, verse 17, before him, all the nations are as nothing. They are regarded by him as worthless and less than nothing. Jeremiah 10, 7, who should not fear you, king of the nations? This is your due among all the wise leaders of the nations in all their kingdoms. There is no one like you. So we are ambassadors diplomats of the most high god and the whole of the earth is his Mm. and we represent him and i love what you're Mm. doing anita Mm. through patches in africa Mm. you haven't stepped back you step forward into it Mm. and and uh, Mm. 
and and have been getting the divine um to to really um the direction to really take hold of of what he wants you to do and uh, i love also the serendipity of the lord that we might have our local patch that we know is what we focus on that mm. has the ability to pull any of us uh, out to do something on some assignment and it completely yeah. confuses the enemy because uh, that we we don't live in hierarchy we live as family of god together yeah. and so it works beautifully so if you have something to hold for a moment think about that that the lord holds the whole earth in his hands praise the lord so we're gonna finish uh now and i'd love you anita to just close in prayer for us and uh to uh, ask the lord to equip us really in what we're about um uh, it, wherever our patch is and how far uh, the lord might be directing us into what we do together thank you Father, in the name of jesus we thank you so much for this gathering we thank you lord because mm. your word says that where two or three are gathered in your name that you're mm. there so mm. us. thank you lord we you know we recognize your presence oh god lord we thank you because you ordained this meeting you planned who would be there and who would be here and um you mm. know what would be discussed lord i'm asking oh god for england i'm asking for england i'm asking for thank england you. I ask you to birth England in each person's heart. Give us a new desire um, to see souls Amen. won. Amen. Give us a new desire Amen. to take our place as ambassadors. Amen. Open up our eyes, our spiritual eyes and ears. Amen. Incline our hearts to you, Father God, so that we come into a closer, in, more intimate mm. relationship with you. Mm. Father, I'm asking, oh God, that as intercessors, Lord, that you make us a lot more sensitive to you. Amen. Help us to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Give us a heart that is so full of love, Father God, that we no longer see Amen. our differences, oh God, but that we see um, each person through your own eyes. Amen. I'm asking, oh Lord, that in this hour, that you, um, you know, as we as we begin to take ownership of of the nations oh god of this mm. nation mm. i ask oh god lord that you help us to be bold help us to um be loving help yeah. us to be committed help mm. us to be diligent enough to learn about our nation to learn the history to learn the um you know just the ins and outs and and give us full understanding so that we know what we're praying about give us <laughs> dreams and visions give us um give us insights tongues interpretations whatever it is we need mm. for this hour father so that we're fully equipped oh god to take the land mm. father mm. lord you said that wherever our feet stand that you've given it to us oh god oh, and so cool. even in the spirit we take england we take england for christ england we speak mm. to you the land mm -hmm. must yield mm. to the word of god land I, I declare and decree Amen. that you belong to Christ, Amen. that the glory Amen. of God will cover the earth, Amen. it will cover the UK. The glory of, of, of God will cover each and every ambassador. Amen. Father, I thank you because we're stepping up and we're stepping into our inheritance. Amen. We're Amen. stepping into all that you have called us to be. Amen. Lord, Amen. we are so grateful. We're so grateful, Amen. Father Lord. Thank we do you, not... Um, we don't you. underestimate what you what you're doing we don't yeah. underestimate father god even yeah. ourselves we're not disqualifying ourselves yeah. and father i thank you because in this in this time lord you are calling you are calling out father and i thank you because we hear you i thank you because we hear you we hear you father god i i, I you know I, I i believe that in this hour like older people actually taking their place because they're not they don't have as many um ties um you know so I, i'm thanking you lord that even as we we begin to take our places father god that you will quicken our mortal bodies i speak mm -hmm. healing and health to each person mm -hmm. lord i say strengthen our bones strengthen mm -hmm. our each cell replace mm -hmm. renew mm -hmm. re re revive whatever needs mm -hmm. you know needs 
done, Father God. I'm asking that you yes, do so Lord. that we can run and not be weary. We'll walk yes, and not Lord. faint. Yes, Father Lord, I'm just thanking Lord. for a fresh anointing, fresh oil you, in this hour. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. And I just bless thank Bob you. and Mary for bringing this group together. Yes. I mm -hmm. thank you for each household that is represented. Father mm -hmm. Lord, I'm asking, oh God, that your peace, your peace, thank Father you. God, will rest on each and every yeah. home in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you for thank that, Anita. So appreciate it.